Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are you? How is everything going? What is new in your guys' life? For you guys who don't know me, my name is Jordan McLean and I am here every Thursday to bring you a true crime that's happened here in Canada. I try to make it every Thursday, sometimes I miss, but I'll try my best. So welcome back to my channel. Um, how's everyone doing? It's getting so close to Christmas, which is super great. Everyone loves Christmas. Some people don't, I know for sure that a lot of people don't. I'm not the biggest Christmas person. Like Halloween, I will deck my house out. Christmas, I have like a couple deers that I got from my friends that light up, which I never plugged in and they just blew over and I just let it snow on top of them. So I really don't have anything going on in my house right now, but what's going on? What is everyone doing for their Christmas? Let me know down below what you guys are doing. And again, if you guys can and you have time, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button because once I get to 150 uh, subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway. Yay! Everybody loves a giveaway, right? And if you are wondering where I got these beautiful earrings, can you guess? Moss and Sparrow, that is correct. And I'll be linking them down below so you guys can go take a look and see if there's anything that, you know, catches your eye. They have really cool stuff. It's a renewable um, shop that is here in my hometown and it is just great. So the story that we were going to be talking about today is about a story about people who just went out to celebrate Christmas, uh, not Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve and just wanted to party with their friends and it just turned to tragedy. So today we'll be talking about the 1979 Chapez tragedy that happened in Quebec and the fire that killed 48 people. So if you guys think that story is interesting and you want to see me turn from this to this, then stay tuned and I will tell you the story about the 1978 tragedy that happened in Quebec where a community hall burnt down and 70, not 70, 48 people were murdered by one individual who decided that it was a good idea to light something on fire. So stay tuned and let's get ready. So again, with all my videos, I try really hard to uh, tell you guys exactly what I'm using. I usually tell you guys instantly with my face and then when it comes to my eyes I do not I just you know struggle so today I'm going to be using the Jeffree Saw blood sugar palette um, I know some of you guys in my comments are going to be hating me for doing that but it is just what it is I you know what the guy could be a horrible person but he does make a good eyeshadow palette I'm going to be doing a Christmas look today so that will be exciting for everyone it's just going to be mostly red and gold I don't know what I'm thinking of doing, but I'm going to start with my eyes because, you know, with red, there's probably going to be a huge amount of fallout. All right, so let's get into this story. So, so let's get the presence. It's Quebec. It's cold. It's winter. You know how it is. So on December 31st, 1979, 350 people attended a New York Eve party that was held at the, I don't even want, I'm just going to put the name out here. It's OPM. Sorry, O P E M I S K I, Opmiska Community Hall in Quebec. During the event, the Pine Branch uh, used a Christmas decorator. Decorations were accidentally set accidentally set on fire, with the result resulting blaze killing forty eight people and injuring fifty more. So it was a big, big thing that happened. The rural community of Shop Prez, the one that I struggled to pronounce, was established as a mining town in 1955. At its peak, the mine employed 700 of the 3,500 people of the town. So I'm also from a really small town, and again, it is huge when, like, we have mines come and go, and our town is bopping when the mines are in. And then when they're out, no one really cares. You know, it's not a huge thing. So I'm a town that really kind of values, you know, mining and stuff like that. And I get, I get the idea, like, you know, how grateful people are for these jobs, but they're so easy to lose. So it's, it's sad when people do lose those jobs. Like, like I said, we've had three mines, I think, in the last, like, year shut down. So, with a sawmill employing the other 450, which is, this is my town. I am from this town. Just in a different province. Uh, the Falcon Bridge Copper LTD, who operated 
the mine gifted the town with a community hall that could host 300 people. On December 8, 1979, the mine hosted a Christmas party for its employees at the community hall. A large number of Christmas trees were installed as decorations, and for a second year in a row, a large arch made of pine branches was installed near the entrance. So, you know, it's Christmas. People wanted to have a good time. And that's that, you know, they're like, you know what? I don't know back then how rough of a year it was, but we all know what it's like here. It's not the best living where we're living in a pandemic. You never kind of know what the outcome's going to be. Every day is changing. We thought we were on the mend and now we got a new variant, right? So people just wanted to relax, let go and, you know, spend time with the family and friends. So that's all they did. So they're hosting this Christmas party, which I haven't been to a Christmas party, side note. I haven't been to a Christmas party in probably over four years. Over four years. My husband's uh, business that he worked for doesn't didn't have a Christmas party the last two years. And um, I was, for the longest time, the only employer for my business here in Hinton. So I never got a Christmas party either. So that was cool. Not fun at all. We're gonna make this very red and very vibrant. So it stains my eyes. So they're having this Christmas party. Everyone's super excited. The town is bopping. They're talking about it. Half the population works uh, for this company. This is the second year they're hosting. They have been doing so well that they've even decided, you know, to gift the community with its own community hall which is huge and really great back in the day when they do stuff like that a lot of companies don't do that now they just you know take the money and run so they made this beautiful uh, arch made out of pine branches that was installed near the entrance following the party it was decided that the decorations would be kept in the room for the upcoming new year celebration in order to prevent the branches from drying out an employee of the town hall was tasked with spraying the decorations with water. The employee went home during the holidays, resulting in the branches drying out for a few days between Christmas and New Year's. So they did have someone hired to do it, but you know, some people get lazy. Again, it's Christmas is coming. We don't want to just hang around and spray branches all day. So I cut my crease and then I added decided to th like think I was filming and I wasn't and I just added some gold I guess my camera died so I'm adding gold right now to the cut crease it's not really a cut crease but just so the gold can pop a little bit more and the gold is called sweet note if anyone I'm sure no one's probably gonna want to duplicate this look but just in case so during the night of uh, 31 oh my god during the night of December 31st 1979, the Community Hall hosted the New Year's Eve event as a fundraiser for the local Lions Club. The entrance fee was $5 and the club sold around 300 tickets, so that's great for that club. It was a tradition in chapeys for people to move be um, between different social gatherings in the New Year's um, to wish members of the community success over the year. So, you know, not a lot of a lot of people don't just stick around to one area, they tend to move quite a bit. So that they kind of expected that, so they sold less tickets, only 300, and, but they did expect more people to show up just because of the amount of people who, you know, people move around, so they thought, you know, we're gonna have a lot more people than this. I'm gonna put my my eyeshadow on, not my eyeshadow, my eyeliner, I'll be right back. So we're just gonna leave it with a little red, little whatever, it is what it is. So now we're gonna move on to the face. So I'm gonna do my signature poreless foundation, foundation, poreless putty on my nose, and then I'm gonna go with the next honey, do melt me or whatever it's called. Rest my face. So they did, you know, people run around to the community to wish people success for the year and such was decided the past midnight people could enter without tickets they knew other people were going to be around after midnight you know the whole idea of 
on New Year's Eve party kind of lose its lust because everyone goes Happy New Year and then they just walk it off. People go home, people stay, whatever. Now I'm going to go with the True Match and for concealer I will use the Infallible Full Wear. So they're like, yeah, come on in after, you know, New Year's when the party kind of stops and we'll see where we're at. So after midnight, um, and the, the rush of the townspeople exchanged their greetings, the party started to die down. And as such around 1 a.m., when the party goers started going home, security was relaxed. So they're like, you know what? Who cares? Who comes in and out? It's 1 in the morning. I'm tired. Everyone's tired. It's now a new year. We don't really care. Florence Canton, a young laborer, was playing with a lighter in the celebration of the New Year's and accidentally set um, a fire to the arch of the pine surrounding the entrance. Remember, it was very, very dry. The one person didn't do their job trying to keep it moist and wet. So that this was kind of like a shock to everyone. So he sets it on fire and nearby patrons um, attempted to put the fire out using fire extinguishers. The people inside the room did not evacuate as they thought the fire was part of a prank. With the attempts of the extinguishers and the fire being a performance, the volunteers succeeded in exhausting the flames. However, the flame reignited when a nearby door was opened, allowing fresh oxygen to supply the, the remains of the fire. So they're like, oh, we got it. And then it's like, again, right? And they're like, oh, shit. So at this point, they're like, you know, maybe we could potentially evacuate. That might be something we could look into. If by any chance, we might die. So they start panicking at this point And they're like, hey, we should probably, you know, not deal with this. So the fire then reignited and quickly spread to the garlands hanging from down from the rooftop. People began shouting for everyone to leave the room. The crowd moved towards the left entrance of the building and the relit fire propagated through the room and in the mere seconds a power outage shutting down all the lights. So you you can probably guess the carnage and chaos that was going on you know the only thing that's lighting the way to get out is the fire at this point so it is not looking good for anyone right so the like people are panicking people are screaming to ensure chaos they found that the door was blocked a group of men managed to force the building the building's right entrance open Although this was partially blocked by cleared snow. So they did get one area open, but that was it. So people are freaking out, which if you ever watch Carrie, you know, kind of like that vibe. I was trying to make the weird faces when I'm trying to put my concealer on. So they're doing like a Carrie, right? You know, people are um, panicking. People don't know what to do. People are freaking out which they all have the right to because damn you're gonna die on new year's like you don't get a present for that you get a present for having a baby but you don't get a present for being the first person dead so people are screaming people are going through going through it you know trying to get out not trying now i'm gonna go with the fit me matte and polis powder like i said this is a ride or die and this is the one that i always reach for and i love it as the evacuation was ongoing, volunteer firefighters from the fire station located 500 feet from the community hall arrived and tried to, you know, put out the fire from the outside. Many party goers that managed to escape had their clothes on fire as they left the building and rolled down the snow to ignite the fire. They were badly born. Victims were transported to the, the near hospital and were only one nurse was on duty because, you know, small community they probably only had like one nurse there anyways so it's too tiny for that right they really didn't really like they didn't think it through but they also didn't think that they were going to have a huge fire that would probably kill a hundred people 
So there's only one nurse on duty and the born victims were then transported to the hospital 30 minutes away. The next morning, nine of the badly born victims were moved to the hospital from the hospital by helicopter to a large hospital in Quebec City because they were so badly born. Then they did find the dead bodies and everyone kind of in the carnage once everything kind of did kind of go down. Um, they noticed not everyone did make it in 48 people did perish in this fire, which is super sad. So since this fire happened, they went looking for uh, Florent because he was the one who started the fire. Um, they said that he intentionally did it. He there was rumors going around. You know, people lost people were in an uproar. They lost loved ones. Um, a lot of families lost more than one person. It wasn't just you know, just him. It wasn't just one person accidentally. He set the place on fire. Everyone got out safe. It was now he was facing harsher trial because a lot of people did unfortunately not make it, which was horrible. So that he was set, uh, he set the decorations on fire and he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and the death of Robin. Um, Dejanins during the trial admitted to holding up a lighter to the flammable decorations with intention to play with fire. So he's like, I did kind of mean to light them, but not to set the town hall ablaze. He compared the situation to people lighting paper napkins in celebration of New Year's. So he was kind of saying it was an accident. I didn't mean to. He's like, yeah, it was an accident. I didn't mean to kill anyone. You know, it's New Year's. We're all having fun. You know, people nowadays have sparklers. It could have happened then. So Captain was originally sentenced to eight years in prison without parole for three years. This sentence was deemed harsh considering that Captain's actions were negligent, but nevertheless, he did not intend to cause harm. Petitions were calculated by citizens and organizations in the province asking for more lenient sentence due to the fact that he didn't actually go out of his way to kill anyone. He just didn't mean to do it. He, you know, it wasn't his fault, they were saying. It's not his. So they were like, he needs a lenient sentence. And the following then appealed by Captain. He was like, you know what? Everyone else thinks I need a lenient sentence. I'm going to do an appeal. So he did, and the sentence was reduced by the Quebec Supreme Court to two years minus one day. In that case... I could be wrong, so let me know down below. If it's two years minus a day, doesn't that mean it's a summary conviction and not an indictable one? I'm using, to outline my lips, I'm using the NAS one. I find everything right now on my complexion is coming off mighty pink. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll see how it turns out. Upon release from jail, Captain moved away from the town, starting a new life somewhere else. Ten years later, he was convicted of uttering threats to his wife. So, good guy. Now, I'm going to go in with the dose of colors. Ooh, we're going red. She's red. None on my teeth, which is a bonus, Joan. She's red. So the effects on the town was deeply hurt by the loss of many lives. In addition to those who were physically injured, the events left a deep emotional scar on the community that happened. Um, a memorial park with, with a walkway and a plaque marks the location destroyed club. Um, a social worker who authored a thesis on the psychological and social effects of the tragedy of the town stated that um, the people preferred not to talk about the fire with the subject eventually becoming taboo. Most survivors did not re receive any psychological help or counseling. So they were just like, oh, all my friends died. Cool. I'll just walk it off. And most of them resorted to drugs and alcohol. 
So I'm gonna put my lashes on and then we will talk about my thoughts. All right, we're gonna talk about my final thoughts about this case. So it was a little different one. Um, perfect for Christmas and New Year's Eve, you know, people dying on New Year's, just what I wanted to tell you guys about. So first things first, the look, I really like me with red lip. I hate my eyes. Should have been more blending. It wasn't what I envisioned, but I don't care. I'm just going to leave it, whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't think the guy probably should have got, you know, charged with murder. He did light the thing on fire. And I do know with manslaughter, it's like if somebody's riding a bike, I throw a water ball at them. It hits them. They fall off the bike, hit their head and die. I could be charged, you know, um, with manslaughter. I didn't intentionally plan to kill anyone but it happened so I know that can happen and I've seen it happen before so I just thought I would say that but I don't think it should have been charged um I feel really bad for the community I think that community is only known for this tragedy and that's why they have a tough time talking about it and why they don't want to talk about it anymore it's kind of like the story I talked about the cult up in Nunavut I think it was none of it, yeah. And how the community doesn't want to talk about it anymore because they were embarrassed by it. I don't know, I don't think these guys were embarrassed. I just think that, you know, that's all they hear. Like, my community's only known for having a community hall burned down and killing 48 people. That's it. There's nothing else exciting about us. And they're probably sick and tired of talking to reporters, news people, podcasters, all kinds of people. Like, just drop that shit already, man. Like, we get it. We get it. People died. So I think that's why they didn't want to talk about it anymore. But yeah, those are my final thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought about this uh, true crime that had happened in Quebec. It was a little bit different. Um, it's not something, it's just, you know, it, it just kind of talked about the trial. The, it didn't really get into the community that much. Like I said, it was a small community. It just kind of, you know, the people died. That was it. The guy didn't, he got a slap on the wrist pretty much afterwards. He didn't even get that big of a... A sentence he got put for manslaughter for one people out of the 48 people who died so he didn't even get anything he didn't even get a thing so let me know what you guys thought below let me know what you guys thought about the story what do you guys thought about my look did you hate it as much as me and I will be back on Tuesday so again if you guys can please 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 like and follow and subscribe down below I will be doing a giveaway once I get to 150, so five subscribers away and the giveaway will happen. I'm super excited about that. If you can, go follow my socials. I'll link them here and I'll link them down below. And also, if you guys are down below, make sure you guys go and you write what you guys want me to talk about, who you want me to talk about. I have some upcoming stories on people who I have been suggested to do and I'm doing some research on them right now. So please, please, please go like and uh, give me... Tell me who you guys want me to do next. Also, um, it's been a year. A year I've been on YouTube. Um, and thank, I want to thank everyone who has been supporting me from day one, who watches all my videos. It just means the world to me. Thank you, thank you guys so much for the support and the love. It just means so much to me. And I'm happy that I can get out here and tell some stories and do some shitty makeup on here for you guys. And you guys enjoy it. So thank you again. And I will see you guys next Thursday for another true crime. Bye.